Hi, Brockton residents. This is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and welcome to the 36th episode of Our Brockton. Uh, the title speaks for itself. It's Our Brockton, it's our community, it's, ho it's our home. Of course, uh, March is uh, Women's History Month, and I am uh, really proud to be interviewing two sisters, two educators, two community activists, just two wonderful Brocktonians. Uh, the first is Ms. Jackie Jones. Hi, Jackie. How are you? Fine, Mayor Sullivan. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us, and congratulations. Um, we're filming this today, but yesterday you were recognized as a phenomenal woman by the NAACP branch here in Brockton. Thank you. And Thank um, you. you're an educator. You work with uh, Brockton Public Schools. You're an attorney. Uh, but you're a Brocktonian. Brocktonian. You love Brockton. Absolutely. But because it is Women's History Month, and we're talking about really the vital impacts of women uh, in the city of Champions, the Commonwealth, the country, um, tell a little bit about yourself for those that may not know who Jackie Jones is. Sure, sure. Well, I'm a longtime uh, Brockton resident, almost lifelong. I went to Brockton High School, and that is actually where my sort of activism um, began. I was in school during the time of apartheid, it was very strong in South Africa, and so we took a position on um, not carrying our student IDs because we found out that they were made by the same company that required people to require, um, carry them in South Africa. So that was our way of using our voices all symbolically to support them. So I have been in Brockton ever since. My children went to Brockton Public Schools. I worked at Massasoit. So Brockton is, Brockton is home. And one thing you always tell me is you had a history teacher a long time ago. My father, my father was your teacher back in the day. Absolutely, Mr. Sullivan. And I tell people when they say, oh, a little bushiness, it is from Mr. Sullivan because he took us to the Breakers. The Newport Mansions had never been there, but he took the 11th grade history class there as a field trip. And it certainly exposed us to greater ideas really about wealth and inequity. So in his own way, he helped prepare us for some of that activism because there certainly were questions, how could these families have houses that were a block long? Long. And, you know, just kind of looking at what did that mean in our country at the time. So. so one thing, Jackie, that you and your sister Gwen have done forever, as long as I've known you, is uh, give back to the community. Um, and one of your passions is to educate the youth, the next generation. Do you mind sharing uh, some of the pursuits you're doing right now and some of really the important things that you're doing to the next generation of Brocktonians? Absolutely. So we um, began um, Harambe Learning and Cultural Center, which is the nonprofit that we founded really as a response to everything that was going on during the sort of um, George Floyd, uh, sorry, George Floyd summer. Uh, we have always been active um, in Brockton, and we did a festival that lasted almost 17 years here in Brockton. Um, African Festival and Marketplace was at the Fuller Museum as well as at the War Memorial um, Auditorium. And so we looked at the chance to give back through having free black history classes for young all the way um, to adults. So this is our third year of doing them, and right now I am doing them through the Broughton Public School System with middle school students. It has been a joy. Uh, really the importance is the students get to learn that there are no limits accept their imaginations, but also any kind of limits that they have put on themselves. No one in my family has ever done, or no one has ever done that, or I don't know a black person that did that. So that's what we're looking to help give back by giving confidence, encouragement, a sense of empowerment, and also a sense to be able to dream and know that those dreams are possible. And one thing that you and, and Gwen have done since, uh, since I've been mayor is Juneteenth. Absolutely. And do you mind sharing? Um, many of the viewers have heard of Juneteenth. A lot of them don't even know it's a recognized national holiday now. Um, but the first Juneteenth that we did, um, Senator Ed Markey came. Yes. It was outside. And yes. we had our masks on because yes. it was in the height of COVID. But Absolutely. I want to thank you, first of all. Um, but do you mind educating and informing? Most certainly, sure. Well, as some you know may know that technically um, Abraham Lincoln on January 1st, 1863, issued what's called the Emancipation Proclamation. And that meant that all slaves being held by southern states were free. But what happened during that time, so just imagine, young people, there was no internet, no phone, no Google. The news took just about two and a half years to travel to Texas. So that means that the slaves in Texas did not get free until June 19th, 1865. And so that began being a, a celebration in the state of Texas. That's where it began. My mom is from Texas. She grew up celebrating Juneteenth, and it wasn't until she came to Massachusetts as a young Navy bride in 1958 that 
she found that it's not celebrated all over the country, and indeed she met so many people that had never heard of it. So we really appreciated that my mother had that education. We consider her Queen Juneteenth, and we were so happy to help educate our community. And so for us, what Juneteenth represents is freedom, but also the importance of having an education, the importance of voting, that is your power, and just the importance of remaining connected, because that is indeed what helps strength and helps us survive as a community. So we enjoy it's a free celebration. It will be held again, City Hall Plaza. We thank the mayor for sort of opening up the city house uh, to us, and we're looking forward to, on um, this time, having a focus a lot will be on music and gospel and sign of the songs of strength and power that carried our ancestors through that time. It's such a special time, and, and Juneteenth this year will be on a Sunday. Yes. It actually uh, is, is the same day as Father's Day. Yes. So uh, I'll be there, uh, <laughs> and I can't wait. And, and your mom has a special uh, celebration coming up in the near future, right? Yes, yes, yes. My mom will will be 87 so Miss Queen Juneteenth uh, we look forward to her helping as she has over the past two times leading the little procession in and we're looking forward to that and also as we are in Women's Month what we recognize special women like my mom and so many other women that helped to pave the way here in Brockton but also what some people may not know is that the first black um, fee well, woman to be a self-made millionaire that means she didn't marry money and she didn't inherit it was Madam C.J. Walker. She made it for her fortune, which now Avon and other companies, Mary Kay, emulated door-to-door -door selling beauty products. That became her the first black female millionaire. Well, her ties to Brockton are that the first black millionaire, Watt Terry, here in Brockton, he was one of her friends. So there's no evidence that she came here to Brockton, but he did go to her mansion in what's called Upper Astoria, New York. So that's a pretty exciting connection. And that's why we also have a plan, and we'll talk further, about doing a Black History Trail here in Brockton. Because Brockton has so much rich history that um, people just are not aware of. And again, every day it seems like, even though Gwen and I feel like we know a lot about black history, Every day, see, you know, there's some other layer that's being unveiled. So we look forward to sharing that as well. Yeah, and, you know, I'm going to um, ask you if you'd like to come back because I would love to just dedicate a whole episode of our Brockton on the trail because it's so important. Absolutely. So, again, we're, uh, we're just so fortunate to have you in our community. Thank you for what you do. Uh, I will definitely have you back to talk about the trail. And, again, I just want to thank you for what you continue to do every day to better Brockton. I thank you for being the mayor that helps us to be able to do that. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah. So again, I want to thank uh, Ms. Jackie Jones for the information she just shared. And when you talk about Jackie, you have to talk about Gwen Knowles, her sister. They, they're synonymous, right? And, and I want to thank you, Gwen, for, for being here. I want to thank you for what you do at Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School. Again, 65% of the population is from the city of Champions. Welcome to our Brockton. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, again, we are talking about Women's History Month. Um, I've already uh, asked Jackie, and I'd love to ask you to come back at a later date to talk about the trail that both of you are talking about for African American history here in Brockton. But for those that don't, I mean, almost everybody in the city of Champions knows you, but if you, if you, if you could just take a moment to introduce yourself to the audience, that'd be wonderful. Sure. Um, again, my name is Gwen Knowles, I'm lifelong resident of over 50 years. Um, in the city of Brockton, um, Brockton High graduate, even had went to Massasoit, then on to UMass Boston and in Cambridge College. And I am a school counselor currently at Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School. One thing that, so myself and, and Sydney Merrill, my chief staff recently came up to Southeastern and you were nice enough to take the time to talk to us. And one thing I've said is to be an effective leader, you have to be a good listener. And so when you and Jackie talk, I listen because I mean, you, you really understand um, what it means to be a Brocktonian. You understand how important it is to educate the youth. They're the next generation. Um, so do you mind sharing uh, some important information that, you know, you and your sister have been doing summer programs here in Brock, and, of course, Juneteenth's coming up, which is always an awesome day. Uh, but maybe those that don't know you or would like to be interested in some of the teachings that you and your sister do, if you would like to share that, that'd be wonderful. Sure. So we also um, have done a lot of um, virtual programming, which has been the way due to COVID. So we've done a, a virtual Kwanzaa. We also have um, had guests last year during Women's Month, um, some local women, uh, business women, and just things that they were doing, women of color. Um, also just conversations about education, state of the uh, community of color, just, just things that people are talking about and want to get answers about or um, 
have questions about. We just try and um, keep the conversations that are relevant uh, topics. No, I think it's important, and of course, um, diversity, inclusion, and equity here at City Hall. Um, we just hired Yolanda Kiner, and on the school side, of course, Renee Hayward. You know, you, you and your sister, that's what you've done. That's been your passion. I mean, education and also educating about the right information. And so um, maybe we could just give a little sneak peek about the trail. That would be wonderful. Some of, and, and again, I give all the credit to you, you and Jackie. You've come up with this idea. Of course, Willie Wilson's an advocate. He's always been an advocate as well. And uh, many of you know Willie Wilson from Brockton High School. He's just a phenomenal person. Um, but maybe we could just do a little tidbit, a little tease on what well, the trail's I'll, I'll give, all about. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give a little tidbit a little bit in regards to Mr. Wilson. Yes. That Willie um, was the first male of color at Brockton High School that wore braids. He wore his hair in braids. That I know is that, a tidbit. That is. That's a and fact, too, right? he was called <laughs> down to the office by then um, House Master Puliafko, um, because they wanted to know what type of statement was he making with those braids. So in, in knowing Mr. Wilson now, um, who's braidless, um, <laughs> it's just a very interesting story and um, one that he's proud of and that we're proud of him as well. What year do you think that one was? Um, well, he graduated in 71. Okay. So, um, back in the day? Yeah, back oh, yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah back so in, in the terms day. of um, what you do at Southeast, and again, it's a great school. It's a great school. Um, you know, we have wonderful, wonderful students that go there from the City of Champions. Right. You know, what, what makes you get in the car and drive there every day? Like, what gets you jazzed up about working there? It's my families. It is. It's definitely my families. I love working with my families, and I am partial to my students from Brockton. Um, you know, I always try and explain to them there's a difference between uh, being from Brockton and living in Brockton. There's a big difference. And those that are from Brockton um, just have a different feel yeah. for the city. And I think a lot of the um, chaos sometimes that happens in the city, that's from people who live in Brockton. Yeah. And it's a, it's a big difference. So I really try and instill in them some of the, a lot of that um, Brockton pride and things that they can um, be proud of. I, I heard a lady mention yesterday about Brockton, the reputation that it's always had, and I was over there shaking my head saying, no, that's not true. Because again, we all know um, of a different time. So really about instilling um, prideful things in my students overall, but especially my students from Brockton because out of our communities, um, Brockton has more of, of, of a not so good rep as opposed to some of the other communities, and I don't want them to not be proud of where they're from. And I think we are trying to, you know, we're better together, right? So we're trying to yes. really create a new, a new sense of what Brockton is. Those that were born and raised here, like you and I, you know, it's, it's once a Brocktonian, always a Brocktonian, and box are strong, box are pride. But, you know, a lot of times the news media tells the bad things that happen right. in the city. And we're a city. You know, people sometimes forget that. Um, but we have wonderful people that yes. live here, that work here, that are just so engaged. And you and Jackie are great examples yes. of that. You don't have to do what you do. Right. You really don't. You do because it's your calling, it's your passion. Right. You yeah, know? no, no, definitely. And um. It is. It's like we love. I mean, it's like we love. We love Brockton. We 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 really do. Um, you know, just the connections that have been made over the years through going from Ashfield East Junior High. Um, I'm still very much friends with people since first grade. So it is. It's a. Uh, it's um. It's something that that means it. And one of our reunions one year. The theme was all roads lead to Brockton, and I absolutely love that. So every time I say something to someone who hasn't been here or hasn't been here in a while, I'm like, all roads lead to Brockton. And that's true. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter if you're on the West Coast or Florida. Somebody has a connection to Brockton, Massachusetts. Yes, it's awesome. definitely. It really is. So um, I will definitely see you and Jack and your mom at, at Juneteenth. We're yes. going to be planning that. It's awesome. You spend so much time doing it. Um, I am probably going to ask you if you'd love to come back to talk about the trail, and we'll we'll invite Willie to join us as well. Definitely, yeah, no, I definitely would um, would like that um, to be able to talk about that because I think it it's something that's important, but that also is is going to be good for the city in regards to being um, a legacy. That's what it's all about. We are legacy carriers and legacy builders. 
So I want to thank you, uh, Gwen, for what you do every day to Better Brockton and your friendship and, and your dedication is, is really just an awesome thing. Um, you and Jackie are special people. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, it really has been my honor and privilege to, 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 to be the host of Our Brockton, the 36th episode. Two wonderful guests join us, Jackie Jones and Gwen Knowles, two sisters, but more importantly, two special people that care about the city of Brockton. They'll be back again at a later date. We will be having them and also Mr. Willie Wilson to join us to talk about the pursuit of establishing a long overdue trail um, to showcase African-American history here in the city of Champions. So again, stay tuned. We will also um, be proudly hosting Juneteenth again, Sunday the 19th of June, outside of City Hall. And I want to thank Gwen Knowles and Jackie Jones for what they do every day. We'll be back uh, for the 37th episode. I won't tell you who our guest is going to be that day. It is an honor and privilege to serve as the mayor of the City of Champions. Have a great day. Thank you very much.